peace to my soul in the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul love sees our calm the wind sees to blow no matter how dark may be the night everything will be alright when the God of comfort speaks peace to my soul when a broken heart leaves me hurting inside and I rain my tears all through the night his voice I hear there's a reason to fear seas are calm, the winds cease to blow, no matter how dark may be the night, everything will be alright when the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul, when the God of Over children. I only 
go Clouds want to gather round me. I know my way is rough and steep. Oh, but beauteous things lie just before me, where God redeems. Thank you for the ones that's here tonight, being in the house of God and Hickok Baptist Church. Appreciate everyone that's here. God really appreciates it. I uh, got a few names there. St. Vincent, Pam Lyons Cook, 
have an open heart surgery tomorrow. Uh, Shirley Cruz from Hoboken is in the Waycross Hospital with COVID. Uh, Gerald Johns and his family had it, COVID. I don't know if they still on quarantine, I think. Uh, Kenny Johns had some surgery. We'll add him to the prayer list. What else we need to add to the prayer line or take off? Lee Cruz? Lily. Lily. Lily, Lily Cruz? She was at one time, but I don't, I don't think. Uh huh. Lily got a lot of things going on with her. Remember Lily Cruz? What else? She, got, she passed away, yeah. yeah. Uh, Donna Bohannon called me. She was a Bohannon maiden name. Uh, there's another Donna called the pop called it. That, you know, that, when you put her on there, that was a question in my mind. But uh, let, me, let me read them. We, we got uh, Donna Bohannon called it, Joe Moody, Ronnie Brooker, and Shane Whitford on the breed list. Ruby? Put our school back on. Schools and all concerned in school. How about that? We're all concerned in school. All concerned in school. Her boss's family? Yeah, she's married. Her husband's family. Uh, we also have a lot of people that are in Facebook for salvation. Um, and salvation for a lot of people. We all got friends and family. Who? Forty seven. Forty-seventh day, as you were saying. Amen. Amen. Yay. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. for election, Lord put the right one in there. The ones he wants in there. And the ones that we think is right, but maybe it'll be the ones that he wants. <laughs> we hope and pray. But yeah. Uh, unspoken. 
We back up just a minute before we have prayer. Grandparents' Day, September 13th. So your grandparents get to go eat with your kids at school. So the way they do it in Brantley County, nobody at other school. Uh, well, GW, how about leading us in prayer for all this? You heard out of Pat, Billy's brother today. You do? There you come. What? You got an update on Pat, Billy? Good morning. Yeah. I saw, I saw Brother Mike uh, Hendricks yesterday, and he's going up and downstairs with a walker. Yeah. So. Come along good. Lord bless them. I got. Okay. Yeah, William Hanley was not able to be moved to the hospital, so he's still in the Brunswick Hospital. Uh, one, one, I didn't see here, Jackie Tumlin, remember Jackie Tumlin, he was, he was pulling a Billy Row, boiling some peanuts from my understanding in a pressure pot and it blew up in his face. <laughs> no, but you cook him in it. <laughs> burned him in his face and the chest. And he said he felt like his glasses saved his eyes, but it burned him. He got in his lungs, went in his nose also. Remember him? One other thing. Uh, we got new literature in. If you want your literature for your class, uh, it's in the coffee room area. We, we give it out to you. Or you can get it as you leave. Thank you. Yet, but I'll try to remember tonight. We're going to open with hymn number 301, 301. Let's stand together as we declare our resolution. I am resolved. 
to follow the Savior. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a
seated. Amen. Good to see you tonight. It's it's good to see y'all here on a Wednesday night. Uh, it's amazing if you go around and and talk around how many churches are not having church even pre-COVID on Wednesday night. Uh, glad to see each one of you that still want to come and worship God in His house. If you have your Bibles, turn me to Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. I hope in, in the near future that uh, not having church throughout all the countryside uh, is a thing of the past. I hope that's not a new normal. Uh, however, I was listening to a radio broadcast today about some churches that's being uh, fined for having church. Uh, one in a major way in California, and then there was another one uh, matter of fact, they pulled the, they pulled their privileges of parking in some area in that one church in California. I believe that John MacArthur's, John MacArthur's church, and then there was another one that they got charged uh, fifteen thousand dollars for having church. Uh, so uh, we may have to bend together. Uh, I heard more details about where they were parking. It's really not a parking parking lot as we know it. It's something to do with an overflow area that was built in case it floods in California in their area. That that's where it goes, and they just they park there, uh, so it's not a viable uh, real estate piece of property that they're they're parking on. But they got getting fined for that as well. But. Uh, God's got more money, more strength, and more knowledge than any of those folks. So uh, be praying for them. And what they were asking there was for people to stand up and be accounted. Yes, ma'am. I was looking at Daniel's shirt there, and I think that, that would be a good saying, not today, Satan. That's what it says on his shirt, not today, Satan. Not any day, Satan. God's bigger than that. But if you found Romans chapter 5, look with me there. Stand, we'll read a verse or two, and, and uh, then we'll get in our discussion on the Word of God tonight. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also... We have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Father, tonight, again, as we have come together to worship you in spirit and in truth, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege that we have uh, in this place that we live. God, I pray for those places that want to attend church. God, and somehow uh, wicked men are not allowing these things to happen. Father, I pray for them. Lord, they just need a little dose of salvation, Father, to change their hearts and minds. But God, be with them, be with those churches, be with those pastors, those, those members, God, that they will be strong in the faith and, and uh, hold the banner of Christ up. And God, you will not be defeated, you will prevail. God, we thank you for that. Have, have your will and way tonight in this service. Bless the uh, reading of your word as only you can. And all God's people said, Amen. We look in Romans you know, when when someone mentions the book of Romans, one of the first things that comes up is that's where the plan of salvation is written out. Although it's everywhere in the Word of God, it's written out in many, many verses. You can uh, uh, you can get these little flyers and stuff that's got all the scriptures, how to lead someone to Christ. Uh, but those alone won't, won't save you. You say, well, Brother Jamie, well, no, a lost person that's not being wooed or being pulled by the Spirit of God could read them and answer all the right questions. But if God's not in it, then those won't work. But if God's in it, that is 
a template for us to go by. But looking at this verse, and uh, some of my favorite ones is, is on down a little bit further, uh, but I, I was thinking uh, of, of be, uh, trying to be uplifting and all like that, and right off the bat here it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Uh, we want peace with America. We want peace in America. We want peace with other countries and all that. But the most important thing is to have peace with God. You know, you, you either having peace with God or you are the enemy of God. Now, I know some people would, would fuss with you about that statement, but that statement is true. He says, you either for me or you against me. There's no in between. You're not 50% okay and 50% bad. You're either for me or against me to have peace with God. And uh, what we, see, we see that happen with God's people um, especially those that are getting sick or whatever. Um, it's much easier uh, for the families and all like that to have, know that they have peace with God, that you know a, a better life is waiting on them in, in the very near future for some of them. And uh, we have that same promise of being a, a child of God. He says, but being justified by faith. You know, we're only... Uh, the plan of salvation was made up of... The only way to, to, to get saved is through faith, not, not works. I, I, I wonder if, if, if there was a, a, a margin set, a line drawn in the sand, that if you prove to yourself and God that you could get good enough at this point, then I wonder if anyone would strive to even try that. Because there's no good in us. We, we don't become good and good things start happening until we get born again. So no good is in us. We do a lot of good things. Even lost people do good things. But when we're talking about things that are good in the eyes of God, uh, it's not just being nice to your neighbor and opening the door for women and children and, and elderly. That, that's, that's a wonderful thing. But being good, but you have faith, you're, you're justified in God's eyes through his shed blood that when you have faith in him. I, I, I thought about that. Of course, we know the definition of faith according to the word of God. Uh, but but what, is, what, what is that? Uh, when you have faith in something, it means that whether you've proven it or not, you believe it works. You believe that's the right thing. That you have faith. When someone says, well, I have faith in you. You know, I have faith in you. That means they trust you. You know, and if you're justified by your faith, then that means you're saying that you trust God with everything. That's faith. Other than a spiritual move in your life and a few physical things, there's no way for you to prove that to someone else other than the life that we live and the testimony we can say because you, they can't see him. Only thing that they can see is you and me responding to the walk and the ways of Christ. That's the only way. So we're justified by our believing and trusting in God. And it's that simple. We can't be saved without faith. Without faith, no one can be saved. It says, he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And there again, it's not on nothing we have done. We have this faith in him, what he's done, and now we're justified. He says, by whom also uh, we have access. Uh, that means getting into someone. You got access. You got a, a way to get in. He says, we have access by faith into his grace. Now, uh, we, we live in what's known as the grace period, you know, uh, prior to uh, Christ is coming and, and uh, uh, the veil in the temple was rent in twain and uh, no more sacrificial lambs or nothing like that. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, prior to all that, uh, we look in here, it says, uh, we have access to those things of God uh, through his blood, through him shed, his dying on the cross of Calvary. It says, into his grace. And grace is that uh, even though we are sinners and we're saved by grace, we will continue to sin at the very best that we can do. We shouldn't sin uh, willfully, 
but we will mess up. And there's where grace comes in. In spite of what happens in our life, God's grace, we're, 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 we're born into the, uh, the, the grace period of God where he tolerates it and will forgive it. He says he will forgive all of our sins and shortcomings, and it's at our very best. There's none righteous, no, not one. Not one can get by that, even to save uh, people. You know, that, that's something uh, a lost person would argue, wants to, wants to bring that to your attention. Well, there you are right there, and you're a Christian. Well, that, how do you know so much how a Christian ought to live? Have you tried it? If you really knew what a Christian was going through, you would know that at our best, the Bible says our, our, our righteousness is filthy rags. We should do better, and we ought to do better. But if you want to compare something, don't compare my life to salvation. Compare uh, Christ's life to salvation, for he was the perfect one. He was the perfect Lamb of God. He lived without sin. Uh, I'm just doing my best to follow in that, those footsteps. I'm not perfect. He says, but uh, we have access through faith. And that faith thing is a big thing. Notice we get salvation through faith, and we have access to the grace of God by faith. By faith. We ask God to forgive us. He says he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and unrighteousness. Now that's not talking about a lost person. It's talking about one that has been born again who has sinned and he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. He'll do that for us. Not just for salvation, but even after salvation. In verse 3 it says, uh, I'm sorry, girls. Uh, chapter 5 of Romans. Chapter 5 of Romans. He says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. You know, if, you, if you're all jacked up on God and like we should be, and we're falling and realize we're in the grace of God and, and, and we're in the presence of God, then when troubles come along, we ought to get excited because we know we don't fight this thing alone. We're not by ourselves. He's going to hold our hands. He's going to blaze the trail. Whether we're going through a valley or climbing over the mountaintop, He is going to be right there with us. There's where grace is and there's where peace is and there's where joy is. It's found. Not that we get exempted from bad things. We don't get exempted a lot of times. But we do know by what, what He does whether if we, if, we, if we die, you know, we still are winners either way. A lot of people don't need that. You know, in this world that we know, there's always a winner and a loser. There's always a winner and a loser, except for one time. My, my son, his senior year, uh, they played a, a championship state football game, wound up in a tie. At that time, after end of regulation, there was no way to have overtime. To, now, after that year, I think it may have happened twice, but that year, because of that what happened, they changed it so that they would be a tiebreaker, which literally means there is no straddling of the fence, which I think was a biblical move. You're either for me or you against me. If you're on Christ's side, you're a winner either way, and you're on the other side, you're a loser either way. There's got to be a winner, and Christ is going to be the winner. He says, not also, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Well, we understand that God allows us to go through things. It's for our own good. It, 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 it's, uh, what's my word I'm looking for? It, it conditions us uh, in our walk with God. Sometimes we, we get, might get a little uh, horsey about things and think we got the world by the tail and we don't need him as much as we used to. Everything's going good. Got plenty of money. Got plenty of something to eat. Everything's going good. And all of a sudden, he reminds us, it's not you. It's him. He says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience comes through. God don't work uh, always uh, spontaneously on the spot. Sometimes prayers that have been taught with God and, and pled to God last days, sometimes minutes, sometimes weeks, sometimes years before we see the results of it. 
but God's word is true. One of the promises of God, it says that if you train up a child in the way they should go, when they get old, they will not depart from it. Now, I'm going to tell you, whether it happens at, near death at their, on their bedside, God honors and he honors what he promised. Raise a child in the way they should go. When they get, now, there's a lot of time between when they accept Christ and learn that they may go west or east or north or south. They may go way away from the center of God's will. But I'll tell you this, God will honor what he says he'll do in any aspect that he has to do it, whether he has to put them on flat on their back or if he puts them in situations uh, through different ways. Uh, just can't name them all because there's so many ways he can do that. But he honors his word. He says, and then if you have this patience, he says, uh, then you have experience. No better than to talk to someone about something who's done it. If, 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 if I was talking to Sister Carolyn back there. She's still having a little bit of problems, and she thinks it's based on what COVID's done to her, and I'm, I, I think she's right. But, you know, if, if I were to get it, I would probably, if she called me, if I felt like I'd call her, okay, did this happen to you? Yeah, that, that's because you're wanting to talk to someone who has experience. I don't know who's got more experience than God, do you? If patience worketh uh, experience, then we go through, this is, I'm telling you, this is why this is here. We do stuff like that that we have experience as a testimony, we call it, to tell people how God done us through things and made us come over it. In spite of what we think sometimes, how can we go through some of this stuff? How, could you, how did you do it? Well, it's, it, it's, it, it was all God. It wasn't me. And, you know, yes, I had all this. You know, first thing, uh, uh, you, you let a new something come out, and uh, there's a, I would say over 50% of the people will diagnose themselves and they'll have it. They'll have it. I, I could make up a, something if I was a popular person. I could make up something and throw out a bunch of symptoms right there and the doctors would be called left and right and they say, I know I got it. I know I got it. But we need patience with God. Patience with God. He says, patient works experience. He said, and experience hope. You know, that's, I think, with talking with someone who's had the experience. You know, did you know salvation in the Bible is referred as having an experience? Well, you know, what does that mean? You, you, you got experience in it. Well, I've been there and done that. I know what it's like to be saved. I know what I felt. I know all these things. Man, I can tell you now the time. I can take you to the place where the Lord saved me. You know, but I don't have to go to that church. I don't have to go to that pew. I don't have to go to that pulpit up there because he saved me here. Although I, I can take you to the place and I can tell you the time when the Lord saved me. But he saved me in here. He says, and then we have the hope. You know, when someone tells you that, say, say things ain't going good, and a, and a Christian comes by there, and, 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 and they've, they've been through a lot of things, maybe not exactly what you're going through, and they come by there and says, oh, let me tell you, God's got it in control. You're going, how can you say that? I, man, I'm hurting. Uh, you know, I'm down and out. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I, I got all this. And, then, uh, you know, uh, you, you think all hope is lost. And there they are. They says, hey, I've been there. And God never failed me. He never left me. Oh, it looked dark a time or two, but he never left me. See, I, I had the faith in him. And then and, and, and having that, I, I, I gained a... a, a I gained, uh, through this tribulation, I gained experience. And through that experience, I produced hope in him. If you don't have hope in nothing else but Christ, then you're wonderful. But if you don't have hope in Christ, the Bible tells us that we all men are most miserable. If only in this life we have hope in it. Let me tell you, this life don't have nothing. And I know we work our fingers to the bone down here trying to do something, and we all going to die or we all going to uh, be snatched out of here one day. All going to die. What's the big deal? Then we begin to have hope in Christ. It says, and hope maketh not a shame. You know, it's something how all these lead up to, to back one another. When you have that hope, 
You know, you talk to somebody who's, who's experienced a lot of things, been through tribulations, and then they had this patience, and it worketh uh, all the... And now they got the hope on there, and then all of a sudden, we look right here, it says it makes not a shame. If you want to run into somebody who will tell you about what Jesus done, find someone that is fresh coming off of a, a, a valley. Whether it's sickness, whether it's family issues, whether whatever, financial issues, whatever it is, talk to that person when God has lifted them back up and they're on their way to the mountaintop. They will not be ashamed. Let me tell you, the, the greatest thing that helped me when I was going through depression is when I could talk about it and let the people know where I was and then where I'm going because there's a long way between where I was and, and my process of going. When I got to going there and I realized uh, I actually, the closer to the mountaintop of that valley that I was in, I began to move faster because I had my hope in Christ. I realized that it wasn't about me. And if, if I was to die, then it, it would be gain. And I wouldn't have to worry about all this other stuff that was worrying me that I thought was going to kill me or going to happen to me or everything was just going to fall flat before me. Who cares as long as you got Jesus? So let's don't none of us go to work tomorrow. Amen? Oh, no, I better not do that. He says, and hope maketh not ashamed. You, that person will tell you, I'm not ashamed. Back then I was ashamed to admit what I was going through. But now I am proud of what I went through because I can brag on the name of Jesus. I don't ever want to go back there, but I'm not ashamed of it. And I, it ain't nothing that I've done. I do take a little pill. But if God didn't bless that pill and bless me with the people that surrounded me at that time, I wouldn't be where I'm at, okay? I'm not ashamed. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Because the love of God is shed abroad in all our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Verse 6, he says, For, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. I often wondered why they put in due time. Well, when God shows up, let me tell you, he's not early and he's not late. He's right on time. And it may not be your due time when some, for God to really show up and, and pull you out of there because they might be somebody, a lost person in your family or neighborhood or workplace watching every little step that you're going through to see how you're going to respond. I bet you they'll quit going to that church now. I bet you this COVID will make them stay home. I bet it, da, 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 da. And when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you come out on the other side and all that, boy, it's, it's going to be happy. He says, when we were out strength, Christ died for the ungodly in due time. It says in verse 7, and this is true, this is talking about an earthly thing. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. You, listen, you know, I would die for my family. You know, I, I, would, I would put my life in front of the train for them if that would save them. But the Bible tells us even here, for scarcely would a righteous man, if there was a righteous man uh, that someone out of the way, just a brethren would come and die for that person. It says scarcely. That means it might not, may, may or may not happen. Scarcely. Scarcely that would happen. Now notice what it says. He said, for scarcely, for a righteous man would one die yet peradventure, or perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. So it's a little bit less than that. You know, a righteous man, a good man, you know, uh, your, your, your percentages is getting lower and lower and lower. He says, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what? That, that's below the good and the righteous. That, that's below that because we were neither one of those. There's nothing good about us. We weren't righteous on, in our own right. The only way to be righteous is with the blood of Jesus. That's the only way to be righteous. And it says right there, but God commended. You know, that, you know, he didn't say God commanded. He commended his love toward us. What is that? He laid it out there for you. Even when you wasn't even uh, lovable. You know, they ain't real flowers, are they? No. But anyway, if they were real flowers, there's a time when that thing looked like a, a weed. And then all of a sudden, a bud came out. And then all of a sudden, later on, a bloom popped out. And then you have what you have is what we know as a flower. Then it's desirable. Listen, we don't come here as a flower. 
We come here, the Bible refers to us as a seed. A seed is something that is not even germinated, which means don't have any life. But when Jesus saves us, he germinates new life within us. And he says, spring forth and bring forth an abundance of of fruit. He says, but God in his way, he commended. He commended. In other words, this is the benefit of being saved, that he, you accept his love. You can't, you can't, he, he loved just even though we didn't love him or knew about him, he loved us anyway, and it's just laid out there. It's just laid out there. You know what? And that, that might not mean something to somebody, but if you die without accepting him, then it's going to mean something one day. He's going to say, I had it laid out there before you. Here it is. I commend him. I love toward you before you was, a, you know, and you're still a sinner. And, and the word that that person to get is depart from me, you worker of iniquity, you sinner, for I never knew you. You did not accept my commencement of love. You did not accept the commencement of my son who I sent to die in your place because you were unworthy to come here without him. Verse 9, much more than being justified by his blood, we shall shall be saved from the wrath through him. You know, I think one of the important things is when I don't know how the word saved come up. You know, I've I've never dug into that. If you look into, um, if you you look in, I can't remember what the book is, but you look in there when you look up a word in there and it'll tell you that. The word saved is in there many times, many times, okay? A little source. Concordance, that's it. I just, just whew, went over. You look in there, it's, it, it's many times. But what it means with, to be saved is you're on a slippery slide going to hell in a high rate of speed because our life, according to Ecclesiastes, is nothing but a vapor. So that's a high rate of speed. My son told me today, he says, Daddy, is the day already when? I said, yeah, I got to go to church tonight. I said, he said, man, he says, if my life speeds up more when I'm 60 than it does at 31, he says, I'll always be working on Friday. I said, son, you ain't seen nothing yet. But that's where people don't realize that we're on a slippery slide going Somebody says going nowhere fast. Oh, yeah, you're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. He says, if you're not justified by his blood, then you'll face the wrath to come. Wrath to come. How can we measure the strength of God? Well, one way I can measure it He was strong enough to bite back the tears and the selfishness to give us his son to die for us. That's pretty potent. You know, we measure um, tornadoes. We, We got a way to measure the force of tornadoes. Or we just take their word for it. You know, if it tears up your place, you don't care if it was a... Uh, a five hurricane or a tropical storm, it tore your place up. But we always want a way to see the strength of something. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you the strength of Almighty God was is more powerful than anything you can ever imagine that he would enter into this earth and send his son to do something for us even while we were all sinners. I don't know what the percentage of loss versus save will be in the end. But I know there will be more going to hell than there are heaven based on the word of God. Because it says, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's the same word they used here. But narrow is the way and straight is the way that leadeth to righteousness. That That leads to glory. And the Bible says there's few there be that find it. I always hated this. If I was to say this, hey, run go get me a couple of pieces of paper out of the office. You know what she's going to ask me? 
How many is that? Well, what do you normally think a few means? Well, I always thought a few round with two. Or go get me several of them. There's no number attached with it. But let me tell you, when the Bible explains what happens, the percent, I do not know. But I know it's going to be the chosen few. You say, well, that sounds like predestination, chosen few. No, we're all chosen. Everyone's chosen. But a lot of people don't yield to the call. You know, the, you, can, you can sign up and go to the military right now if you want to. But if it got bad enough, they would call for somebody. There's a difference. Some enlist, and some are drafted. Well, let me tell you, Jesus will draft you because he's going to call you. You don't have to go on your own free will. But on your own free will, you can accept him and go. It's there. But I can tell you, few there be that find it. Now, I'm, not, I'm no judge, but I can tell you what some of the stuff I see on TV, those folks' hearts are not right with God. It reminds me of that old song you sing at the invitation, Is Thine Heart Right With God? The answer is no, if you act like that, no. Also, on that same radio station I was listening to, they was talking about a few fellas, and they didn't call no names except one guy that did. He was well educated in in ministry, but he was agreeing with Oprah Winfrey about that. There's many ways to get to God. Now, I don't care how much education you got in ministry. I don't care if you got a Ph.D. If you talk like that, you don't know God. You may know a textbook, but you don't know my God. There's only one way. He said, no man will come to my Father except by me. I am the way. You know, it's amazing. It's the same thing that he His father told Moses, which God and the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. So they told Moses, tell them that I am sent me. It's almost like he's saying, we are sent you. (laughs) I said that. That was a different translation. No, it really just popped in my mind. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man will come unto my Father except by me. And the only way you're going to do that is through faith. And through your faith, you're going to have tribulations. And then in tribulation, when you overcome that, you'll have patience. And then so forth and so on. And then at the end, you'll have hope. And then you'll have a testimony that you'll tell people. I'm going to say this, and I promise I'm closing. Met a fellow one time. I said, man, how you doing? And son, he gave me a spill. I mean, he had it rehearsed. I don't know. He talked about... Uh, other than having a, uh, my third wife that this, that, and the other that's running around on me, this, that, my youngest is this and that, and all this, and my dog, he's got one eye and bit me in the middle of the night and all of that. He's another that, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, the good news is Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. You don't have to accept, you don't have to live for him, but one day. I want to be counted in the few. Most of the time, everybody wants to be with the, the, the big crowd. I want to be with the Jesus crowd. Because only few there be that find it. And we can find him today. And we can live for him today. And we can have hope. Just because you get down and out about stuff, let me tell you, we're, we're going to do that. It ain't going to be a better rose. I think some people got in their mind, boy, if I get in a church somewhere, and, yeah, if you get saved somewhere, 
God will put you in a church somewhere. The church ain't going to save you. Although that's kind of what's out there now. All you got to do is sign up here and start coming. We'll feed you a hot dog. We'll play a movie or two. Man, we're going to have a big old time. But we're going to leave this part out because this right here drives away. It's going to drive away all right. The Bible says if you believe in it and the truth, and the truth so set you free. I want to be free, don't you? For he that is free is free indeed. I want to be free. Everybody hollering about free this and free that right there. If they got Jesus, did they really know that they have wings? They could be free of everything? Their sins will be forgiven them? I don't think they want what's free. Salvation is free to us. It cost him everything, but it's free to us. They don't want nothing free. They want free food, free car, free telephone, free school. They want everything free. I told my wife one time, I said I was going to hush, I promise I ain't a lying preacher. I told my wife one time, they brought home, the kids brought home a, a little thing they always get at the beginning of school. When I was coming along, you had to sign up for free lunch. I said, give me them slips. She said, no, you're not. I said, why not? If it's free, we'll participate. Well, needless to say, I didn't send them in. Because it wasn't free. Every year I got a little note that comes from the county office up there that reminds me it ain't free. The only thing free is salvation. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we know we don't want tribulation. God, we don't want to get patience that way. But God, if we do and we have and we've overcome through you and have faith in you, God, let us be a trumpet of the hope of Jesus Christ. Let us have the joy and not be ashamed of the gospel to tell folks how where we was and how we got to where we're at now, free and justified by Jesus. Help us, Lord, to do that. Lord, I just pray for the rest of this week be a great one for each one. God, I pray for this country. God, I, pr I pray for those cities. I pray for the police officers in those cities and whoever else there, those people Lord, are doing these bad things. God, I, I know you could stop it with the blink of an eye. One swarm of hornets, one tremendous hail storm, one mighty rushing wind. But God, I know there's a purpose for it. But God, we ask if it be thy will, Lord, to calm that raging sea. Lord, give us the mind of Christ. Let us shine our light wherever we go in Christ's name. Amen.